So here we are up to round two of using my beautiful French Belgian tiled stove. Now, last week I cooked a dish called Coq Van, which is the French side, and now I'm doing a Belgian dish called Carbonade Flamande. I think that's the way you pronounce it. Anyway, first thing I have to do is to spark up this old stove, and with an old wood stove, you need to give them time to heat up. Not like you guys with all your gas and electric. I'm doing it old school. I'll show you what we're doing. So there she is there. I've got my fire lighters and some timbers in there. This does run on coal, so what I'm going to be using is some, some lump charcoal right there. But first of all, we need to spark this up, give this a crack. <laughs> Wait. So as you can imagine with an old wood stove, um, they do take a little while to warm up. So that's the start of it. And the advantage would be that it gives me time to actually go and prepare all the ingredients. This one's a doozy. It's a beauty. Anyway, get back to you. So the old girl's been running for about 40-50 minutes, something like that. I'm going to show you this fire. She's absolutely pumping at the moment. Dump charcoal. She's doing a thing. Just top back on there if I can. There's my pot just warming up slightly. That little tool I like to use, this thing here, gives me an idea on what's happening on some of these surface areas. 314, she's up there. 130. Over the back there. That's nice. Over where the pot is. All good. So. That's uh, one thing to always check when you're using a wood stove, just see what sort of temps you're getting. But what that's done is to give me enough time to get all of this ready. Have a go at all of this. Yeah, we have our stewing steak, we have our bacon, three onion, onions, Dijon mustard, some brown sugar, our aromatics, which are bay leaves, and some thyme. Now we have our nutmeg at the back, our um, crushed cinnamon, I suppose you, that's what you call it. Fennel seeds and oh, I can't, uh, can't remember what he is at the moment. Anyway, the other thing with this is that it uses a full thing of beer. So, oh, and a little bit at the end, we add in some bread. First thing I'm going to do is to brown off all my beef, then go to the bacon, onions, and till we've got all of that stuff in there. Anyway, French Belgian stove, doing her thing. So as you know, when you're <coughs> browning off um, all your beef, there it is there, um, you need to do it in batches so the pot doesn't cool down too much. Now this should be over nice high heat. There we go. Nice getting there. Could have been a bit hotter, but anyway. Oops, get in there. So, going to do all this beef in batches, and then we're up to the onion. Get back to you. Get busy now. So as you can see, all our meat has been seared, browned off, and put in that casserole dish there. I'm now up to the onions, which is three large onions, which does seem quite a bit for one dish. But anyway, wait for them to caramelise and break down, and then we've got all of this to go in. I've already done the bacon, and then we have all the goodies, and then we finish off with this bottle of stout. So, onion time, and we're getting there. Smells delicious already. So as you can see, the onions are nice and caramelised and translucent with the bacon in there. And next stage is our brown sugar. There she goes. Give this a nice quick stir. Then what we do after that is to transfer all of this over to that top pot there, which just has all the meat in it. And then it's time to add our spices and then our beer. So. One bit closer. So we're that one little bit close to the finishing point. We have our Dijon mustard, all our aromatics in there with all our spices and everything else. I'm just going to give this a quick, just a quick mix up. As you can hear, she's still nice and warm. And then the bit I've been waiting for, adding in the stout. Now I did try and find a Belgian stout. Um, pretty hard to find at the moment. Um, so Coopers would be my next best choice and supposedly in she goes 
bottle of stout, then a dusted. I'm going to give that a quick mix and then we supposedly put these bits of bread in there which I'm assuming would be a thickening agent. Then we're going to pop it in that oven for about three hours. So quick stir and I'll get back to that. So the bread's gone in, <coughs> excuse those birds but anyway I am cooking outside as you can see. Um, so the bread's gone in, um, this has had its 15 minutes or so sitting on the stove top without a lid. Now I'm about to place the lid on, pop it down there for three hours. Um, yeah, so she's getting there. So it's always nice when you get to the end of a recipe. Stove top's all clear. Pot sitting in there, it's going to be sitting in there for about three hours. Quick check of the fire, as you do, and she's doing her thing. So now I suppose it's my time. Have a little bit of a bit of a bloody sip, eh? Mm -mm -mm. The joys of cooking. I've got three hours to wait. I don't think there's gonna be much of that bottle left anyway. See you next time around, eh?